More people in Singapore are set to get better health benefits from easier access to nature and therapeutic landscapes under a new National Parks Board framework. This comes amid ongoing efforts to support active ageing and preventive health initiatives nationwide. Some parks like Bidadari Park and Roas Bay Park are among 15 sites picked out as what's called contemplative landscapes. These offer tranquil seating areas and scenic views that encourage reflection and contemplation. More specialized therapeutic gardens are also being planned. These are easy to walk with sensory elements, different planting zones and good amenities. Similar therapeutic landscapes are also making their way to more housing precincts. Meanwhile, more rest points like benches are expected along park connectors, encouraging longer visits to parks. A study is also being done to find out how time spent in Singapore's parks and forests affects health and well-being. And for more on what types of benefits we can derive from green spaces, we're joined by Professor Ku Peng Bing. He's Head of Architecture and Sustainable Design and Professor of Practice at SUTD. Professor Ku, welcome to the program. Uh, so first of all, what is the science behind how therapeutic landscapes can be good for one's well-being? Well, there are so many uh, theories and hypotheses out there on how it works. But personally, for me, I feel like just being in nature um, activates something inside of us uh, that promotes our well-being. Like just being connected with nature um, is often enough to activate a healing uh, hormones and chemical changes in our body, the ener energetic transfer. Uh, studies have also shown um, that spending time in nature um, helps our stress level to be uh, well regulated and for us to be able to per have perceived uh, effects on our um, physical as well as uh, social and emotional uh, well-being. Um, so I think there's so many benefits uh, from just being close to nature, being immersed in nature. So I think this end parks move, it's a, a welcome uh, move uh, and it'll be great for everyone. Is there a minimum amount of time uh, for one uh, to spend in nature for these therapeutic effects to take place successfully? That's a really interesting question because we uh, have studies that shows that even micro doses um, has helped um, in uh, recovery from illnesses and stress levels and uh, health. Uh, and I think uh, even 20 to 30 minutes for like sort of just a minimum uh, time spent. Uh, but if you could do two hours uh, per week, that has uh, shown to have really lasting uh, effects. And I think um, frequency matters. So it, the more uh, you can spend time, uh, shorter time, but more frequent, perhaps is better than you know, one one time and longer. So if you can think about uh, going to the park and um, uh, making parks uh, closer to our homes, that will really help a lot. So frequency over duration. I'll take note of this. Uh, when planning yeah. <laughs> uh, therapeutic landscapes, wh what do you think are some of the considerations and challenges? And can therapeutic landscapes also exist outside of green spaces? Yeah, I think absolutely so. Um, in SUTD, we have uh, we are really interested in the regenerative properties of cities and having nature embedded into our design in uh, planning of the city uh, makes our city um, benefit from the the sort of the well being qualities that uh, nature brings. So in in some of our design principles, we work in. Uh, nature being accessible, uh, nature being uh, active and interesting to encourage people to spend more time in nature. And I think some um, like um, studies have shown that people love diverse uh, qualities of uh, nature, like plantings that are uh, diverse, um, uh, biology that's diverse, uh, uh, being able to see different animals. I think that helps us to 
connect with nature a lot better. And I think we should also think about like social spaces or where, where we can host uh, programs, uh, for example, gardening programs or uh, therapeutic uh, encounters, uh, maybe even uh, forest bathing like what they do in Japan. Uh, what are some of the elements uh, that are typically incorporated into some of these successful designs of therapeutic landscapes, Professor Ku? Okay, I think um, in Singapore, we can really consider the thermal comfort of being out in a park. I think uh, one thing that keeps people away from open spaces and parks, the heat. Uh, so if we could think of solutions that uh, provide a thermal uh, comfort, um, then people will be drawn uh, more to the park. Uh, plus, if we can think of like scenic uh, elements uh, using water, uh, mm. maybe incorporating art uh, and land, land art into um, the design uh, okay. will create different identity for different parks uh, that will make parks very interesting and, yeah. and very um, attractive. And to get more people out and about at the parks. Thank you so much, Professor yes, Ku, for speaking cool, with us. Wouldn't we all go? To the <laughs> all right. Uh, that was uh, Professor <laughs> Ku Pingbing, Head of Architecture and Sustainable Design and Professor of Practice at SUTD. Thank you so much.